Hey guys, this is Miss Nina. I thought I'd give you guys a quick lesson at home. I'm missing my student and this is not the same, but maybe some of you guys will say hi. Um, we're going to draw um, a Georgia O'Keeffe painting today. Um, it's called Cow Skull with Calico Roses. Um, Georgia O'Keeffe is one of my favorite artists. She spent a lot of her life in the American Southwest, New Mexico. And she, um, one of the many subjects she painted was these skulls bleached by the sun that she would find in the desert. So after we're done drawing, take a look at Georgia O'Keeffe and see if you like her artwork too. I have simplified her painting to some basic elements and I'm gonna guide you through that. You're gonna need a pen or a pencil. You can color it however you wish. I am gonna be using some chalk pastels today um, and I've already picked out my colors. It's not something I'd usually do, but obviously I have to do that in this case. This is one I did with oil pastel, and this is one I did with chalk, um, but you can use anything you want, marker, um, watercolor, whatever you feel like. Um, so all of my students know that before we start a drawing, we fold our paper into four. The reason for this is it really helps you um, keep track of where you are in your paper so that you use up all your space properly and things are in the right place. You don't run out of room. Okay, so we're going to get started. I often start in the center of a drawing or at the top. Um, in this case, we're going to start in the center. Um, we're going to start with um, these shapes right here. So I'm going to simplify them a little bit. and. Just make some of these kind of jagged shapes that are in the center of this animal's skull. And then before I create the rest of the skull, I'm gonna go ahead and make the rows down here. So for the rows, since it is in front of the skull, we are going to be creating some organic shapes for the petals and roses have layers of petals so that's what we're going to do it's not critical that it looks just like mine at all okay make sure it's nice and big and then we've got a couple of leaves O'Keeffe's painting of this subject is really monochromatic, um, and which means mostly one color, and very, very um, nuanced, but we are going to have some fun with it. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go back up here, start creating some of these elements of the skull. I'm going to make a line that goes out and then up, and another one that's similar, so it goes out and then up, and skulls, of course, are symmetrical, so you're gonna go on one side and then the other, one side and the other. Um, this line comes down and then like this, toward the center, and another line here. This is actually the eye socket on the side here, and these are the nasal cavities. So that's a lot of the skull. Now I'm gonna go up here, and instead of doing the rest of it, I'm going to do the other rows because again, it's in front. So for that, I'm just going to create some of these soft curved lines for my rows. Okay, and then I'm going to do the, um, the horn. So I'm actually going to come here and do this side first. And then you're going to curve. It goes into a little divot in the center for the cranium. And then out here. Now you're going to skip over and imagine where that horn would come out on this side. So I'm going to do it like that. Um, and you can see I make some mistakes. 
like extra lines and that doesn't matter it's not going to hurt anything if you make mistakes or extra lines that you don't like just keep going it does not matter okay there's a division down the center and i'm going to add some lines here for a little shade shade shadowing And then what I'm going to do is, as you can see um, in the O'Keefe painting that I copied here, she has um, dividing lines going up the back of the painting. And what this does is it helps your eye move around the page and it anchors the skull to space so that it is just not just floating. You never want to just leave your images floating in the center of your paper. Um, so it's hard to tell exactly in the painting what it is like on, but I always think of this as being a wall, like a plaster wall. And there's a couple of lines there, and then those get shaded. Okay, so that's it, really. I'm going to go ahead and color it quickly so I can show you guys how I use these chalks a little bit. So I'm going to start with the skull, and I'm going to start by laying in a, a light kind of blushy tone for the bleached bones. And I tell the kids when you're coloring, you want to move your whatever you're using, even marker, chalk, no matter what, you're going to kind of move it in the same direction so that your lines are nice and uh, consistent. You don't want them going willy-nilly all over the place in circles and off in different directions. It doesn't look good. So even if you're planning on ben blending it, you still want to keep these lines nice and consistent. So once I've laid out some color, I'm going to come back in with my fingertips. Um, some people don't like the feeling of chalk. Um, it doesn't bother me, but I have noticed that for some people, this is a sensory issue. It just feels real uncomfortable to them, but it doesn't bother me at all. Um, and when you're blending chalk, I've also noticed a lot of people tend to actually remove more chalk off the page than necessary. You can kind of really work it into the paper rather than brushing it off the paper. Um, and again, these are chalk pastels, so they are actually Soho brand chalk pastels, um, but any brand you can use is fine. Um, steer clear of the super cheap ones. They just don't blend nicely. They're not soft enough. Okay, so that's my skull. I'm gonna knock out these roses by, let's see, I'm gonna use these two colors. So in the, in the painting, they're white. Everything's shades of white and gray. Um, but you feel free to use whatever color scheme you want. The kids, I've taught this a bunch. The kids really like to make these um, vibrant colors, especially kind of color blocking the background with some vibrant colors. Looks really good. Um, so once you've done the drawing, just turn it into something of your own. Um, you can really blend colors together. When it comes to the chalks, as far as blending, don't try and use things that are too different. You want to keep your colors next door to each other on the color wheel is what I tell the kids. Um, so that you don't end up with real muddy colors. Keep them clean and bright by using analogous or similar colors together. So like lights and darks are the same thing. And now, Oh, whoops, we almost forgot to color our leaves. I also just like chalk because it is so quick and you can lay in your color really fast. Um, markers take a while, um, but a lot of kids really like them. And I do use markers a lot, as all of my students know. And I'm 
I'm going to use my darkest shades on the edges here so it looks like it's shadowed, the wall's shadowed behind it. Okay. And then maybe just some really light color for the wall. And then I'm going to use my fingertips to blend these. So you want to just be a little bit careful because you can end up blending your colors together wrong if you keep using a dirty finger. So you want to like clean it off, wipe it off. I don't know. I'm, I'm pretty lazy about that, but I am wearing an apron and so I cannot be wiping it on my jeans today. You can see how quickly you can work with the pastels and they're easy, very forgiving. Sometimes you have to blow off the excess, but don't keep blowing it. Just use it until you're done with an area. Okay. And that is my cow skull with calico roses. Voila. Georgia O'Keeffe. All right. Have a good rest of the day, guys.